Today, we're diving into the world of AI video creation, exploring the WAN 2.2 PUSA V1 model. Think of it as a powerful tool that turns text and images into dynamic videos. WAN 2.2 is the core AI model, optimized by the PUSA V1 technology to be incredibly efficient and capable of generating high quality videos with less training data. The big secret behind its ability to run on regular computers is quantization, a technique that compresses the model so it takes up much less memory. And that's exactly what we'll test today, the limits of WAN 2.2 PUSA V1 on an RTX 3080, exploring how different levels of quantization affect performance and quality. Ever wondered how far you can push your RTX 3080 when running AI video workflows? Today, I'm putting WAN 2.2 PUSA V1 to the test, running it with different quantized models, frame counts, and memory settings. If you've ever hit those dreaded VRAM errors, this breakdown might save you time and frustration. In this workflow, we have the LoRa, the WAN 2.2 PUSA V1, and we're utilizing it on an RTX 3080. I am using the workflow's default model settings. In this first one, on the model that was loaded, we have the WAN 2.2 text to video 14 billion S version. I loaded the high noise model in this node here, and for the low noise model, I loaded this. We will run tests with some models and see how it performs since the input video I made has a different aspect ratio than what comes with the workflow, which is 844 by 480. I set it to 720 by 480. I set the total generated frames to 30 instead of 81. It rounds to 29. So I created this video here in Google VO and edited it to have a lower frame rate since the original video that came with the model had a lower frame rate. I prefer to keep the same standards. The rest of the workflow is standard as it comes. And then when it generates the video, it adds the extra frames generated by the AI. So this first video here is the original video I have, and this other one here was the rest that it continued from that part and added the video. The video output ends up being this one. I'm going to make some changes and see if it gives an out of memory error. Let's see if my video card can handle working with more frames. Here I left it with 30 frames that it will generate. I'm going to make a change. I'm going to set it to 60. Let's see if it will take longer, if it can handle generating, if it won't generate, if it will crash. I'm going to pause the recording here for it to generate and continue after it finishes. As I suspected, it gives a VRAM memory lack error. It gave the error on the screen here and it didn't work. It stops the generation. I'm going to try reducing the frames a little. I'm going to set it to 50 frames to see if it will go. With 50 frames, it also gave a VRAM memory error and took much longer. It was almost completing the project and it took, I think about five to six times the time it took to export when it was with 30 frames and at around 76%, it gave a memory error. So really with this model, the ideal point would be around 30 frames. So here we're going to change the high noise and low noise models to the Q8GGUF model. First, we're going to the high noise. I'll put the Q8 and now we're going, since it's an already quantized model, we have to have this option. Otherwise it will give an error. I'll even leave it on here so it generates the error and you can see the message it returns. I'll also change the low noise to the Q8 and I'll also leave the quantization on just to see that it will generate the error. I'll run it here and you can see that it doesn't even let you run. It warns that we must deactivate the quantization. So here we come and disable it both here, one high noise and the low noise and now we send it to run. 
you're seeing that it consumes a lot of resources. It's a workflow, of course, because of the configuration I have here, a 3080, it hits 96, 97% of VRAM, and the GPU consumption hits 100% frequently. So I'll let it start here, and I'll pause the screen capture so it doesn't affect the video generation. Continuing here, while it loads, I'm going to continue from where the other one gave an error. This here was the last value that gave an error in the standard model. I was able to run the model with only 30 frames, and I'm going to run with 49, which was where it gave an error last time. If it succeeds, I'll increase the frames and generate a next attempt. If it doesn't succeed, I'll reduce it to the 30 that I got in the standard model, just for comparison. As you can see, it again gave a memory error. I'll stop and go back to 30 frames. Here again, it gave an error like in the last generation. And as I said, I'm going to be reducing the amount of frames generated here. I was going to reduce it to 30, but let's reduce it to 40 and see how it behaves. Let's see if it can handle running or if it will crash again due to VRAM memory. Starting here, loading, and as before, I'm going to pause the video so it doesn't consume more resources from the video card. Continuing here, after I pause the recording, it managed to generate, and here is the result of it, generated with the 40 frames. So, with this configuration here, with the Q8, it can run with the 40 frames. So, we made the recording of the Q8 model, we got a total of 41 frames, and now we're going to change to the Q4 model and see what we can get in generation, both high noise and low noise to the Q4 model. We will maintain the last frames generated and increase as we generate to see how far it can generate. It managed to generate the frames normally, here is the result of the generation. Now I'm going to increase again and let's see if it can generate more frames since we're now using a Q4 model. Let's run it with 10 more frames and see how it reacts. With 50 frames, it managed to generate video, then it ends up being a little bigger because more frames are generated. So the more frames we can put here, the bigger the video created will be. Let's try to set it to 60 and see how it behaves. Let's send it to generate again. As you can see, it also generated with 60 frames. It managed to create the video, and the more frames, the bigger the generated video becomes, because after all, more frames were generated, it will automatically increase the video seconds. Let's then keep increasing to see how far it can go with this model. Let's set it to 70 frames here and send it to generate. We reach the model's limit. When we switch to 70 frames, it already gave the error of lack of VRAM memory. So we managed to reach up to 60 frames correctly. When we switch to 70, it gave the memory lack error. Now we are going to use the 2.0 model, which is the lightest of all, switch the high noise, and now the low noise. Let's go back to the frames we managed to execute the last task with success. Let's send it to generate and see from here how far it can go. As expected from the Q2 model, it managed to generate the same amount of frames. Here, we already started to notice that it begins to have a greater loss in the quality of the generation. As it compromised the output quality a lot, I will not see how far it goes because the result was not satisfactory as you can see. These results give us a clear performance curve. Q8 tops out at to 40 frames on an RTX 3080. Q4 handles up to 60 frames without issues. Q2 trades quality for lighter loads but isn't ideal for final renders. So if you're balancing speed and quality, Q4 looks like the sweet spot for this card. Have you experimented with quantized models in WAN workflows? Let me know your best frame counts in the comments. And if this breakdown helped you troubleshoot your own setup, subscribe for more workflow tests and tips.